Now, when you are interviewing Greg McMichael right here, and you see this, mm -hmm. Travis is right there. At this point in time, did you know that Greg McMichael had already gone up to Travis and told him, you have no choice, you had no choice? I still, to this day, didn't know that, no ma'am. Okay. Do you have any idea how much Greg McMichael told his son at this point in time when you go to talk to him? No ma'am. All right. Do you know who else Greg McMichael has gone up and talked to at the point he's about to be interviewed by you? No ma'am. All right. So at the point he's being inter interviewed by you, did he mention he'd spoken with Diego Perez already? No ma'am. Did he mention he'd already talked to William Ronnie Bryan already? No ma'am. Okay. So he didn't bother to tell you who he had spoken to at the scene about this before you ever interviewed him? No ma'am. And at the point you're interviewing him, his son has shot and killed somebody, right? Yes ma'am. And that body's laying 20 to 30 feet away, right? Yes ma'am. All right. And he's animated, right? Yes ma'am. And I think with regard to the Zellwood situation, he said he, what exactly did he say about how they got over to Holmes? He said that he saw him running down Satilla Drive and continued straight on to Burford. They followed him on to Burford. He turned around and ran back towards Holmes and they continued around and met him on Holmes. I think you said that their words were, they went to head him off. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, defense counsel came up and asked you about page six, okay? So I'm going to take you back to page six. Lines six through eight. All right, do you remember Mr. Hogue asking you about this? This yes, guy who we've seen on video numerous times breaking into these other houses, he comes hauling to ass down the street, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So at this time, when he first starts talking to you, this is page six, he's on video numerous times breaking into these other houses. Did Greg and Michael tell you which houses? No, ma'am. Did he tell you which houses to go to? No, ma'am. Did he tell you if he had any hard evidence that Mr. Arbery was the one breaking into other houses? No, ma'am. He said there was a video at one point, but at this point, I don't believe. Exactly. Either. Let's go ahead and move forward to page 17. Sorry, you said 17? I did say page 17. So now we, I'm going to direct your attention specifically to line 14. On numerous occasions, the guy has broken into a house over here, and they've got him on video. Yes, okay. So now we've gone from numerous houses, he's on lots of videos, to numerous occasions, the guy has broken into a house over here. It just says a house, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that's on 17. And then we go to page 18. And now... They got him on video going into this house two or three times. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. All right, so we've gone from breaking into all these houses to the one house, and now it's, anyway, they got him on video going into this house two or three times. So we're down now to two or three times. Is that yes, right? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> now, he does go on on page 26 to say he's the one breaking into all these houses out here. Is that right? Um. Page 26. What line? 10 and 11. Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you ever tell you which houses? No, ma'am. Did he tell you where he got this information from? No, ma'am. Did he tell you the victims of any of these break-ins? Uh, one guy was a banker, was as far as we got into it. Okay. 
Now, the banker, was this the banker from Alma? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And is he the one with the construction site? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So he says the guy from the construction site is the banker from Alma? Yes, ma'am. And now, I want to take you to page 30. I want to get real specific about page 30 for a second. <coughs> interruptions and everything, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. So Christy Rozier, who's she? She is the county coroner, one of the county coroners. And she had shown up, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, who's Christy Rozier trying to talk to? Uh, she's trying to talk to me. She's trying to talk to you? Yes, ma'am. she trying to talk to other enforcement <coughs> officers? No, ma'am. Just you? Not that I recall. Yes, ma'am. Only me. Okay. And I think you said that Greg Michael inserted himself in the conversation. Yes, ma'am. Was she trying to talk to Greg Michael? No, ma'am. And so he came up and starts trying to tell her what went on. Yes, ma'am. And that's when he starts telling her on page 30, well, he makes frequent trips to the neighborhood, gets caught on video camera like every third or fourth night, breaking into places. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, you, as the first responding officer, did you ever find out any of this video footage where he's breaking in every third or fourth night? Me personally, I have not seen anything, no, ma'am. trying to take down that information while he's talking to that unknown person who walks up? It appears so, yes ma'am. Now, who's that? This is Miss Roger. All right. And who's she trying to talk to? Talking to me. All right. And is at this point, who comes up and starts inserting himself into this conversation? Mr. McMichael, Mr. Greg McMichael. And these people are standing around? Yes, ma'am. Who are they? Those are fire and EMS, Clinton County Fire and EMS. that point did anybody tell Mr. McMichael to back off step away this is not the that corners? I recall no ma'am okay so nobody's telling him this is none of your business we need to do our business now you need to go away no I don't not that I recall no ma'am why not I don't have a good answer for you All right, and specifically, I'm going to take you to page 24. We've been talking about this. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, at this point, Gravy Michael's telling you, I jump in the back of the truck because I don't want to sit in the damn kid seat again. So I jump in the back of the truck, and he's running down that damn road, and that's Burford. Yes, ma'am. My understanding. Okay. And... That's when he's hollering, stop, stop, we want to talk to you. Yes, ma'am. And then he immediately says, and we get up next to him and I said, stop, God damn it, you know. Yes, ma'am. That's what the defense counsel asked you about. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Between those two sentences, did he ever say, we went up around Zellwood, we came down Holmes Drive, we passed Mr. Arbery, and then we stopped right here? No, ma'am. Okay. He actually says that he gets up next to him. Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you get up next to somebody, does that imply that you're driving your car? To me, it would. Okay. So the impression he left you with is, we get up next to him in the car. 
That was my understanding, yes, ma'am. Okay, it doesn't say Mr. Arbery got up next to our car, does it? It does not. Okay, so you have no idea how many times he yelled stop, God damn it, at Mr. Arbery. I do not. I just want to be really, really clear on page 21 at the bottom. All right. Well, Mr. McMichael says, I haul ass back into the house. I haul ass into my bedroom to get my 357 Magnum. I don't take any chances. It's because he doesn't know if this guy is armed. That was my understanding. Okay. So he knowingly went after someone he believed was armed with his own gun. That was my understanding, yes, ma'am. I'll pass the witness back. <clears throat> Let's do this back in order. 